this is Chicho. Welcome to ASMR Math. Now, if you've been following the math videos, you'll know that I've said this a lot, but basically, uh, mathematics is a language, it's a tool, uh, just like all languages are. And being a unique language, it gives you a certain perspective on things that you might not otherwise have, right? Um, and I've mentioned this before, I guess, I, heard, I think the first place that I heard this was uh, through Robert Anton Wilson, who was quoting someone else, mentioning that, uh, you know, some people say it's easier to talk about uh, the concept of relativity, le relativity in quantum mechanics in Swahili than it is in English, because Swahili has certain words uh, that really can't be translated well into English that are suited to talk about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, right? Now, I don't know if that's true or not, because I don't speak, Swa I don't speak Swahili, and I don't know anyone uh, who does, so I haven't uh, come across anyone that does that. I can ask them this question if that's true or not. Uh, but I know that to be the case through, you know, a couple other languages that I speak and through people that I've talked about, and through mathematics. Now, what I want to do in this video is share with you a certain perspective that math gave me on a problem or, or a life situation that I've always wanted to figure out why this was the case, but I was never able to do that. Uh, until I looked at it through the lens of mathematics and all of a sudden it just sort of it was it was one of those wow moments where I sort of went you know did a double take and I looked at it and it was extremely simple but it blew me away anyway okay and the concept I used to understand this concept in life the concept of mathematics that I used to understand this concept of life was just simple ratios okay now this, this problem, this situation that has always, or for as long as I can remember, intrigued me was time, basically trying to get a handle on what time is. And if you've watched uh, um, one of the previous videos I put out, when we're talking about um, the speed of light and why we can't travel at the speed of light. And we talked about Einstein's paper of general relativity. Uh, on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, I guess. Uh, I mentioned this, I think, towards the end when, I guess, the credit part was coming up or something like this, where um, th I've been really curious about time. And one thing, if you're, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how old you are, if you're, you know, in your teen years or if you're much older, um, this, this is something that everybody experiences, but everybody as far as I know, only experiences it during a certain period in their life. And the sensation that really triggered this for me, uh, the first place that I remember wanting, you know, trying, wanting to understand this was when, I'm, when I was in my teens and in general, when I was sitting in a classroom. Because if you're sitting in a classroom, if you're, you know, when you're growing up as a kid, um, maybe it was preteen, I guess, elementary school. That's when it was really dominant, I believe, in my life. Uh, is basically when you're growing up, when you're going to school, uh, as far as I know, everybody's experienced this, where, you know, you're sitting in a classroom and you're looking at the clock and you're bored out of your mind. And five minutes seems like that is taking forever, right? Really, like even now when i think about those moments and i remember sitting there going just watching the seconds tick by and you're you're just in awe that five minutes could take so long right and as i grew older what happened was um that experience became less and less and something associated with that experience is procrastination where uh in general for me anyway i used to procrastinate a lot when i was younger because i believed time was moving slower 
right? The experience, the sensation of time was slower, hence procrastination. As I, you know, got older and getting older, hopefully getting a lot older, uh, much, much older, that sensation has diminished, has reduced, has dampened down to a level now that I rarely ever experience that sensation where time is moving very, very slow or, or I'm procrastinating. And in general, I don't really procrastinate anymore, right? So the perspective that, the sort of a mathematical perspective that I took towards this, trying to wrap my head around this, okay, was using ratios to look at that time difference, the, the sensations that I've had when I was younger as compared to the sensations I'm having with time as, you know, as of right now, and I'm not sure what it's going to be in the future, but I'm curious to find out, right? And what I did was look at it through the mathematical lens, mathematical perspective, and I used ratios. And what I'm about to talk to you about, and this is, um, you know, something that's been with me, part of my toolbox of teaching mathematics uh, to almost anyone, right? I usually bring this concept up because it's, uh, it's intriguing, it was a wow moment for me and I love sharing it. And it, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what level of mathematics it is that you know, okay? Because this will make sense to you no matter what. So I use this concept for people who really aren't interest, interested in mathematics where I want to get them excited about math, okay? And I use it with people who are sort of, bah, you know, <laughs> neither here nor there, and they're just doing it for, you know, the mechanic, you know, they're just sort of monkey see, monkey do. That's the, that's the education system that we have right now, right? So they're sort of following the procedures and doing what it is that they're doing. And, you know, sometimes I just want to plant a seed for maybe future if they are interested in this. And I delve really deep into this with uh, students that are, um, you know, have a pretty good grasp of mathematics and they're, uh, they're always trying to go more complicated math. And I, you know, bring this up and I sort of go, okay, you can start off with a simple concept and build on it, right? So what we're going to do right now in this video, with this long with an introduction is we're going to use ratios to understand time to have a grasp of time right and basically this relates to life death and sort of to me i took it to the level where try to understand what the concept of borrowed time is right living on borrowed time so let's take a look at this thing now if we're if we want to see the power of mathematics, right? Let's start off with the system, the setup right now, as you being a 15 year old, me being a 45 year old, and someone else being a 90 year old. And let's take a look at how their perception of time, how our perception of time will vary depending on how old we are, right? So let's take, let's take, okay, let's use purple. Let's see if the purple is okay. Oh yeah, this is a nice color. Okay, so let's say we have three people, right? A 15 year old, right? A 45 year old and a 90 year old. Okay. And let's take one week out of their lives, right? So what we're going to do, instead of taking a look at minutes, seconds, you know, days, right? Or months or years. Let's narrow our calculations down to one week, right? And I've, you know, I sort of, instead of trying to punch everything into a calculator, um, what I did is, you know, I did, you know, I created my spreadsheet and did the calculations and everything. Um, 
in decimal form and we can definitely do this in fraction form as well and initially I was going to do it in fraction form but uh, you know if you want to understand how to use fractions and stuff we talked a lot about this in the language of mathematics of how to deal with fractions and what's the most important thing you need to know about fractions and stuff like this right uh, and we did this in series one and we did parts of it in future series and we're going to continue this um, in series four of the language of mathematics where we're talking about units and ratios right and uh, it's an incredibly powerful concept and you know another uh, i guess a point where i'm gonna uh, <laughs> i'm gonna mention is coming out of high school right the most important thing you need to have a really good grasp up is fractions ratios your units right functions and functions are just an extension of ratios right so if you really have a really nice grasp of ratios what ratios mean how to deal with ratios uh, you're basically set for 95 90 99 percent of the mathematics you're going to use in uh, everyday life okay so if you're only interested in math you need to learn to be able to function in society, to be able to function in our world and almost do anything you want to do. Uh, learn your ratios, right? And this is what we're going to do right now. We've talked a lot about this in the language of mathematics already, right? So let's take one week for each one of our subjects or for us, right? So one week from 15 years, one week from 45 years, and one week from 90 years. Now what we should do, because these are in years, these are in weeks, what we should do is convert everything to the same units. That way we can get a direct comparison of things, right? So instead of putting one week here, uh, or 15, 45, and 90 years, I'm gonna convert 15, 45, and 90 to uh, years to what they are in weeks okay so let's kill the weeks here all right because this is a weeks row what we're going to do is we're going to convert 45 or sorry 15 years into 15 weeks and all we got to do is multiply 15 by 52 because there's 52 you know plus or minus a little bit 52 weeks in a year right so 15 times 52 i did this already in the in the spreadsheet so I'm just gonna write them down it's gonna be 780 weeks right so 780 weeks 45 years is 2340 weeks 2340 weeks and 90 years is 4680 weeks right 4680 weeks okay so what we're going to do right now is take one week out of each one of these people, right? So one week gone, one week gone, one week gone, right? So what we can do right now is let's take a look at how this 15 year old perceives one week to be. Let's take a look at how this 45 year old takes one week to be and how the 90 year old takes one week to be right relative to what they've lived right so one week out of 780 weeks because that's what we're doing we're taking one week out of 780 weeks is going to be one divided by 780 right one divided by 2340 and one divided by 4680 okay those are our numbers and all we do is just punch this in our calculator this is a fraction one divided by 780 comes out to 0 0.00128 so 0 0.00128 okay this one comes out to three zeros so 0 0.000 four three okay and the 90 becomes point zero 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 point zero 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 two one okay that's 
what 1 divided by 780 is. That's what 1 divided by 2,340 is. And that's what 1 divided by 4,680 is. And we can convert these to percentages, right? So all we do to convert to percent, we go boop, boop, move this over two decimal places. Same with here. So this becomes 0.128%. And what that means is one week out of 780 weeks, one week out of 15 years is 0.128% of that person's life, right? What they've experienced so far. This is zero point, bring it two decimal places over, 0.43%. And this one bring two decimal places over is 0.021%. Right? So one week out of a 15 year old's life is 0.128% of their life. One week out of a 45 year old's life is 0.034% of their life. And one week out of a 90 year old's life is 0.021% of their life. Right? And if we do a comparison between what one week feels like to a 15 year old as compared to what one week feels like to a 45 year old. Well, all we got to do is take this and divide it by this or the other way around. You take this and divide it by this. If you take this and divide it by this, you're going to get three. If you take this divided by this, you're going to get 0.33, right? And what those numbers mean is if we take 0.128 divided by 0 0.03043 that's going to give us three that means one week for a 15 year old relative to what they've lived is three times longer than what it feels like for a 45 year old and it ends up being six times longer than what it feels like for a 90 year old right because a 90 year old has lived six times more than a 15 year old and a 45 year old has lived twice as long or three times as long as a 15 year old right so the multiplication factor from here to here is three right and for the 15 year old is three for the 45 to the 90 year old it's two right yeah, let's be consistent with this Let's write it out as right. So if we go from here to here, we multiply this by three. If we go from 45 to 90, we multiply this by two, right? Because it feels it's double the lifespan, right? So one week, if we take this and divide it by that, we're gonna get two. Or yeah, we're gonna get two, right? So what that means is one week feels twice as long or how do we do this this divided by that is two so one week is twice as long feels like twice as much the experience for a 45 year old as it does for a 90 year old right and if we want to go from 15 to 90 we go three times two is six so 15 to 90 we multiply by six right so the ratio of what one week or one amount of time, whatever the unit might be, what it feels like for 15 year olds compared to a 90 year old is six times the difference. A 15 year old, whatever the unit of time is right now is weeks, feels six times longer or contains six times the information of what they've lived, right? Relative to a 90 year old, right? And this should make sense, right? It's pretty, pretty intuitive because a 45 year old is three times older than a 15 year old right so one week that a 45 year old has experienced well a 15 year old hasn't lived that long right so it feels shorter than a 15 year old contains you know there's more memory with a 45 year old right so that sort of feels intuitive right that's the first step towards towards this right now this assumes to a certain degree if we want to expand this 
that we could take this to the next step and you know take it to a multiple of 15 we could take it to 150 we could take it to 100 we could take it to 180 we could take it to any number we want but us human beings we don't live that long right not as far as we know the oldest person is uh i think recorded as 120s or 30s or something like this right so there's a lifespan associated with us right so this makes sense because it's sort of a linear multiple i guess scalar keeps on going right now if we do this comparison when we put a limit on how old we can be then the picture changes right it becomes a little different it becomes a little bit more intense right so let's erase all this okay let's kill all this and add a limit to how old we can get now for the next sort of analysis next step in you know taking a step up in complication trying to uh, appreciate the power of mathematics and what ratios allows us to do instead of looking how looking at the age difference between uh, the 40, 15 year old, 45 year old, 90 year old, relative to the life they've had, right? Let's look at this thing relative to the life they have left living, right? So what we're going to do, we're gonna add, add an age limit to this, a maximum lifespan, right? And let's assume that maximum lifespan is 100 years, okay? So we're not going to measure things based on from birth this way we're going to measure things based on death this way and not how much life they've lived right relative from birth to how you know how long they've lived we're going to measure it relative to how long they have left to live right we're going to measure it based on uh, a hundred year time limit of how many years or for our case because we're working in weeks how many weeks each one of these people has left to live how many weeks we have left to live right so let's take a look at the 15 year old 45 year old and 90 year old relative to the weeks they have left to live right so 15 year old they have 85 years left to live right so let's convert this first of all 15 year old to 85 years left to live right a 45 year old is 55 years left to live right and a 90 year old is 10 years left to live right okay now let's convert this these to weeks left to live because we're working in weeks right so weeks left to live again i've done I've, you know i'm looking at my spreadsheet so 85 years right in weeks becomes 4420 years uh, 400 4420 weeks right four four two zero uh, a 45 year old is two eight six zero two eight six zero and a 90 year old is 10 weeks or 10 years which is uh 10 times 52 is 520 weeks left to live right and what we're going to do it now is take a look at one week you know take one week out of out of each sets of these right so what we're going to do we're going to go one divided by four four two zero one divided by two eight six zero and one divided by five two zero all right and what that's going to give us again it gives us decimals this is going to be 0 0.00023 right but what i'm going to do is um, i'm just going to convert it directly to percentages right 
because we already converted the decimals, right? Uh, just to save, save space here because we're running out of space. So that becomes to 0.023% of a 15 year old's life, right? So if they have, if someone has 85 years to live, if they're 15 years, years old, they have a lifespan of 100 years, then this person has 85 more years to live. That's a long time to live. And you got 4,420 weeks, right? That you can enjoy yourself. That's 4,420 weekends, if you want to think about it that way. And we're going to take one of those weeks out. That means 0.023% of their life is taken out. Their expected life, right? For a 45-year-old, it becomes zero point uh, where are we zero three five percent okay and for a 90 year old it's zero point one nine two percent okay now when we did it last time we did it from birth to what they're expected to live right and that was you know a multiple of three multiple of two and a multiple of six from 15 to 90 but the multiples now change okay because there's a limit to how long you're going to live so relative to a 15 year old one week out of a 15 year old's life if we're looking at it from the death perspective is 0.023 percent of their life for a 90 year old is 0.192 percent of their life the ratio the comparison between a 15 year old and 90 year old this multiple is now 8.5 right so it changed so the multiple from here to here right is going to be 8.5 okay from the 15 year old to do, 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 to the 45 year old oh i can't believe i didn't do this count did i do this calculation from a 15 year old to a 45 year old the multiple is only 1.54 percent oh sorry 1.54 that's the multiple right so this 0 0.023 to 0 0.035 this multiple here is 1.54 times right so I shouldn't really put these down here because this multiple let's keep these numbers these multiples still at the the ratio of birth this was six before right this was three and this was two right now the multiple from here to here is 1.54 the multiple from here to here is uh, 8.5 okay now unfortunately on my spreadsheet I didn't do the multiple from here to here should we do this let me check this out let me bring out the calculator So let's go 0 0.192 divided by 0 0.035 is 5. And the multiple here, from here to here, becomes 5.5, .5, really. Okay, so the multiple here is, let me make a little bit of more room here. This multiple here is... 5.5 okay and if we want to do a check all we got to do is multiply this times this and that should come out to about 8.5 right so we can go 5.5 times 1.54 
Yes, yeah, because it wasn't really 5.5, it was a little bit more, okay? So I'm just rounding. So if I'm gonna round this, this one, I should keep the, be consistent and make this 1.5 instead of 1.54 if I'm only gonna round to one decimal place, right? So times 1.5, right? So what's happened here is we've gone from a, simple intuitive direct connection of just multiples of the originals to something with a limit and now this becomes an exponential because as cl the closer you get to your age time age limit of a hundred years right the the growth or the decay whichever way you're looking at it right the difference the ratio either goes up exponentially or goes down depending you know how much time you have left to live relative to what you've lived to uh vice versa right because ratios you can always look this you know one way or another way right you can go to a store if you're buying chips for example or if you're buying anything that's you know per gram right some stores have it based on dollars per gram some stores have it based on grams per dollar right so it, it sort of switches over and that's what we're doing right now sort of giving you the perspective right now as a multiple of what it would be relative to a 15 year old right but if we take this 100 year old and I actually ex expanded that because we're starting to get curious on this right so if we look at it to someone who has let's say where is it 90 year old 95 year old if we went to a 95 year old a 95 year old only has 260 weeks to live so relative to um, the amount of time they have left to live one divided by 260 uh, 260 is 0.00385 and that's 0.385 percent of their life right which is 17 times the 15 year olds right so one week for a 95 year old is 17 times more precious than what it is for a 15 year old right it's you know for a 45 year old one week is only 1.5 times as precious as it is for a 15 year old but 8.5 times as precious for a 90 year old relative to a 15 year old right and for me when i looked at it from this perspective when i was trying to wrap my head around the concept of time what time meant why time is not absolute to a certain degree the way we experience time our perception of time is not absolute there are times where you know the passage of time seems so 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 slow and then there are times where the passage of time you blink and it's it's gone and if there's any bit of advice i could i could give anyone that i do give advice to people is if you have friends have friends from all walks of life and from all ages of life right because as soon as you have friends that are, you know, more than the, just your age group, which is one of the problems we have in our education system, everyone's grouped together based on age, not based on likes or dislikes or experiences or what they want to do or what they want don't want to do, right? But that's going off on a tangent on a different thing, right? But if you if you ever have the opportunity, right, make sure you interact with people from all walks of life from from all age groups because once you do that you have a better fuller understanding of time because most elderly people or older people you talk to one of the first things they tell you is you know on a blink of an eye it was over right it's done right they can't believe that they were you know for a 90 year old 15 years when they were 15 years old seems like only yesterday right but for a 15 year old when you talk to them if someone or someone younger 
time is going so slow and there's so much procrastination and they could they, it's very hard for them to grasp them being 45 years old or 90 years old you know some some people you know when you talk to them when they're teenagers and I have this perception as well is 30 years is you know when you're 30 year old you're old and then when you turn 45 you look at 30 year old you're young right and for a 90 year old a 45 year old is a baby they're just starting their life right and this to a certain degree shows it right because one week for 15 for 45 year old is only one and a half times the life experience left right one and a half times more precious than a 15 year old but as soon as they get older the curve actually goes exponential right actually graph this thing the printouts aren't the best i didn't you know set it up to graph it but it's an exponential right and this this curve here you know it just keeps on going like this it becomes you know something like this it just goes up and up and we talked a little about a little bit about this because if we set our age uh, maximum age to be a hundred years old then that's sort of our asymptote the limit that we've set and we talked about this when we we're talking about division by zero because when someone turns a hundred right they don't have any more life to live right they got zero years to live so if you divide by zero right because this would be zero someone at a hundred years it's a zero here they got zero lives to zero weeks to live right so if you're going to take one week out of their life you got one divided by zero you can't divide by zero that's an asymptote right that's what we talked about when we talked about um, limits and asymptotes right uh, infinity and zero right they don't have any more life to live right that becomes an asymptote it's an exponential curve right so the picture totally changes if you look at this situation the scenario relative to from when you were born how much life you've lived as compared to relative to when you're going to die how much life you have left to live right and this is this is for just humans right and keep in mind that life expectancy varies a lot depending on you know where you live what country you're from and i've you know i looked at i printed these off you know i went to uh, wikipedia and printed off you know the life expectancy charts and stuff like this and it varies a lot and you know you can you know there is no country in the world that has a life expectancy of 100 years right majority of the countries the best one was the highest ranking one was uh, you know depending on uh, which uh, organizations data you're looking at some of them you know Google was saying Monaco was the highest which is 89 years old but maybe that's because you know that's where a lot of people retire right who knows right very very small place i've been to monaco very very small place right um but most of the charts had japan as the highest uh life expectancy for both both sexes being together as you know 83.7 years right uh, for females it was 86.8 for males it was 80.5 and this is life ex expectancy from birth right and then there's another measure in the same charts which is health adjusted life expectancy which is um, how long are they expected to live a healthy life right so for both sexes life expectancy was 80 83.7 for Japan but for um, uh, health adjusted life expectancy where they expect to live a healthy life was 75 so the gap there was basically nine years right so nine years of an unhealthy life if you're getting older and this you know these these numbers changed according to what country you looked at canada for both sexes was 82 uh iceland was 82 well if you round up 83 mexico is 87 if you're rounding up china's um 76 
the United States was uh, 79, uh, Cuba was 79, same, right? Iran was 76, right? Um, that's sort of the high and mid ranges. Um, what else do we have here? Brazil was uh, 75, Armenia was 75. Uh, and you can go down to, you know, look at the lower ranges. And this one was, you know, there's a ranking of 183 countries. And, you know, they had Sierra Leone at 50 and, uh, you know, different countries. Uh, South Africa is 63. And these numbers are sort of skewed a little bit, right? Because these are life expectancy from birth. But that data is totally skewed based on infant mortality right so you can take a look at this stuff life expectancy based on uh, you know taking out infant mortality right so life expectancy uh, after attaining adulthood and these numbers get closer together the ranges don't skew so life expectancy isn't really the best measure right because it's skewed by infant mortality right but you can take this concept and apply it to life expectancy to any country you want to compare it to and beyond that you can take this same thing the same type of data the same ratio comparison and do a comparison based on you know life of a corporation life of a country life of a tree of other animals right we live a fairly long time when it comes to mammals right but we're don't live the longest right there are sea turtles that live longer than we do there are parrots that live a very very long time right there are jellyfish that are expected you know I believe I didn't look into this a long time ago there are jellyfish that uh, scientists are taking a look at because in essence those jellyfish are considered to be immortal because they can continuously regenerate their cells, right? I don't know if I have this 100% correct or not, but they're expected to live, you know, longer than a thousand years or immortal, basically. So there's scientists looking at uh, the genetics of it, right? The traits of these jellyfish trying to see what allows them to live a long time, right? So you can do the same comparison for things, uh, you know, outside of the human sphere, right? Compare us to other species, to other cycles, I guess, right? You can compare it to the, you know, how long stars last, how long planets live, uh, the ice age, right? Compare it to anything you want. And it becomes really, really interesting. You can, you know, do a comparison for life you know life with the universe and just grow expand beyond this little experiment we've done for us to grasp what the concept of time is and why time tends to vary you know the perception of time tends to vary with age right and uh, it's it's pretty cool right and that's uh, that's one thing I did for me anyway uh, when I started looking at time in in this fashion from the mathematical lens it really answered a lot of questions for me it really uh, made a lot of things come to light and made me uh, procrastinate less right and time really didn't grind to a halt anymore it became more and more precious as I keep on getting older and older as we saw here right because as soon as we add a limit a lifespan for us because everything has a limit right everything changes everything has a lifespan as soon as we add that all of a sudden time became more and more precious right so again procrastination less and less okay and uh, as far as how far you can take this as far as uh, you know the usefulness of this concept of ratios and stuff 
uh, this is incredibly powerful this is really the first step we take when we do ratios uh, in our in you know on the path for us to do calculus because once we understand time uh, then we can start doing calculus because calculus for me when people ask me you know what's calculus to you for me calculus is the introduction of time into mathematics and as soon as you do that you're looking at ratios you're looking at the rate of change right which is really what calculus is and what really this sort of exercise is the first introduction to it okay um, I hope you liked uh, this was something that I I really enjoyed doing I really enjoy teaching and I bring up as often as I can I've been meaning to do this video for a long time and I'm glad that we're getting it done now because uh, I, you know some of the other videos we've touched on time a little bit and we've talked about ratios and uh, we will continue to talk about ratios and functions and limits and asymptotes. Okay. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.